Coming up on the next episode of Painting and Travel, a visit with the Amish at Shipshawana in the heartland of America. Roger and Sarah Bansimer will explore the farmlands and back roads of the rolling hills of Indiana. Today our travels have brought us to another beautiful spot in Indiana. And this is an Amish farm here. The uh, farmer and his wife, Moses and Martha, have agreed to let me paint their beautiful barn here and take a few photographs around their property. They asked me not to photograph their house or them, of course, so I'm going to respect those wishes. But I have my easel set up here, quite a ways from the barn. And it's just a beautiful setting. It's just almost picture perfect. I have a masonite board. It was an 11 by 14 inch board, but I wanted it to do something a little smaller. So I taped it off into a nine by 12 inch board, which is also a standard size. Today, I'm going to use acrylic paints and I'll get started here in just a minute. Well, at the back of this beautiful farm property, there's a railroad track, as you can hear. And uh, Sarah and I have traveled far away from the interstate roads, far from the secondary roads, and we've gotten onto the smallest roads we can find, mainly so we can find quiet, nice, peaceful spots. But there's always something like this, if painting outside that happens, if it's not a train, it's, it's something. I can always guarantee that. <laughs> but this train will pass in just a minute and we'll continue. I'm just using some flat brushes. These are called brights. They have sort of a short hair on them. I'm using a fan brush and a few pointed brushes. Most of these are good quality new brushes so I can get a nice flat point on those. And some brushes are beat up a little bit and they work good for grass and that sort of thing. For my paints today I've put out titanium white, ultramarine blue, Indian yellow, cadmium yellow light, naphthol red, chromium oxide green, and burnt sienna. And why have I put out those colors? I have no idea what, <laughs> I, I do have an idea, but what I do is I just look at my subject and I try and see what colors I think are there. And I put them on my palette. Other times I just use a very limited palette, maybe just the three primary colors. So it just goes day, day to day. I just don't really have any formula, nor do I want any formula for selecting colors on my palette. Another thing that I always bring with me is my atomizer. Got to have that. That keeps my paints wet and keeps the board wet a little bit too. Earlier when there was a train over here, I sat and sketched the barn in pencil on this masonite with a gesso on it. And if I paint this now without spraying it with something to fix this pencil mark on there, the pencils will smear when I paint. So I just spray it lightly with some fixative. One problem with painting outside, of course, is the change in light all the time. And when I got here early and made this drawing, the light on the roof and the side of the building was, the sun was hitting that pretty directly with just a little bit of shadow down there. I really liked that shadow. So I may rely on my memory a bit and lighten this side up and put that shadow in. I don't know at this point. Chromium oxide, green, ultramarine, blue. This chromium oxide green is very opaque. While I was waiting for that train to move on the siding, it was I just kept looking at the, the scene here. It's not too often that I get such a picture-perfect location. And in some ways that's good, and in other ways it's not. If I'm not careful, paintings like this become a little bit too perfect, a little bit too sweet, as I call them. 
But this is the real thing. This is a real barn. We're in Indiana. So as I paint this, I'll try to keep from getting too trite with this painting and try and keep it as painterly as I can. I often lose much of my drawing as I'm blocking this in, but at least as I drew it, I get it in my head that I know where things are. It really helps to have a good solid drawing to begin with. Picking up some cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue. I'll put a little bit of burnt sienna in that to tone it down. And I'm gonna put, get a little bit of white in there as well. This is a very light field here. The lightest thing in my painting, of course, is that sky and this roof. And of course, the lightest thing earlier was the side of this barn as well. There's a small creek down here with water flowing through it, so I may put a little indication of that in later. It's funny how excited I get when I see something like this and how enthused I get when I start to set up and I just, I can't, I just can't wait to get into painting this. Uh, the bad part is sometimes you get fooled. You just can't grasp, you just can't paint what you what you can see and what you can visualize. You know what's gonna, what's gonna have to be there to make a good painting, but you just can't hit it. And other times, uh, everything works just right. And that's magic when that happens. I think art is a search to try and find poetry in simple things. Ultramarine blue, naphthol red, and a little bit of the chromium oxide green. Just trying to vary these greens as much as I can, but I know all the time I can't compete with nature out here. There's just, it's just too much. I mean, there's just so many variations in colors that I think the artist has to take all these intricate pieces and bits and simplify them. And that's, and in, when, when that can be done, uh, the painting becomes kind of a strong statement. Uh, often paintings with too much detail, too much information, leave you a little empty. Uh, paintings that can, that can be powerful and have a lot, of, lot more meaning are often the ones that are, that are very simple. As you can see, we're a couple of hundred yards away from the, the farm and there's a fence here, but luckily uh, we were able to park our motorhome by this little road and then back of us, uh, Moses told me about the corn crop they were growing, which has been harvested now. He's uh, recently planted oats there for the upcoming season. As we've been traveling along Indiana here, I've noticed that much of the corn has sort of dried on the stalk and not knowing too much about farming, I was wondering about that but all that corn dries on the stalk. And when the moisture content gets to about 16%, then it's harvested and cut down and it's stored for cattle feed. Uh, if it doesn't dry out like that and the moisture content is higher then the corn tends to mold, get moldy and spoil. Uh, so the corn that's used for uh, human consumption is uh, picked when the stalks are still green and the corn is ripe. Well, I'm getting this blocked in. Of course, I'm selective in what I choose to paint and what I choose to leave out. Of course, I'm going to leave out this fence here, but I may put that little creek down in here later. Ultramarine blue, titanium white. The sky is very subtle. If I just mix ultramarine blue and white, it's not going to be the right color. I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna in with that because I want that sky fairly gray. When I look at it, I can see that it's blue, but it doesn't have much color in it. I put the trees in first and I'm painting the sky around that. That's because I like to work with negative areas. These negative areas are just these little spaces that show the sky and the light through these branches. Painting this way as opposed to painting the trees over the sky often gives the 
picture a more painterly feel. Now for the thing I've been waiting for, paint this beautiful barn. Ultramarine blue, let me think here. I have to look at this barn and try and determine the color of it. And it's very difficult to know exactly what color it is. But as I squint my eyes, I can see that it's a cool color. And, in, and that makes sense because it's in shadow right now. And so uh, the side of that barn is sort of a cool color. But earlier, the sun was coming across that. And that's when I really was attracted to this barn. And at that time, the color of that, the side of that barn was light because the sun was hitting it. So I'm going to make the shadow on this barn cool right up here. And the side of this barn was this beautiful yellowish color. So I'm gonna pick up a little Indian yellow. If I had yellow ochre on my palette, that would work well too. I need to gray that down. I've got gonna have ref I'm gonna have influence from the, all this grass around this barn too on the side of the barn. It's gonna influence the color. So I'll put a little bit of green in there. Okay, so now I've got kind of a warm yellow green color on the side of that barn. I think that is just about what I'm looking for. It's not what I'm looking at right now, but it's what I saw earlier. On the roof, it's not white, but it's the lightest thing in my painting. I don't, wouldn't want to put it pure white because I want to have color in. I want to have color in everything here. And this barn is is very well maintained. But just to add a little bit of character to this barn, I'm going to sway the roof just a little tiny bit. Just give it a little bit of a curve there. Now I'll start putting in some of these little details in the barn. That's really the focal point of the whole painting, I think, right here. Moses was kind enough to let me in his barn to photograph some of his horses and animals. But I don't think they see too many strangers like myself. They were a little bit leery of my camera. Still not happy with that shadow. I don't like this because it's changed so much and I like what I'm looking at now and I can't really remember what this was like before. So this is what happens when painting outside. So instead of trying to struggle with my memory and trying to invent something here that I saw a couple of hours ago, I'm going to make a change and darken this from this warm color here to the cool color that I'm now looking at. I did love that shadow that was coming across the barn, but it's not there. And I don't know how I can recreate it very well. I, do, I did take some photographs. I could recreate it that way, but this is beautiful as well. So look at this little bee writing on my hand. Look, Rog, there's a whirlwind coming through the cornfield. Really? It's like a mini tornado. Oh, yeah. Whoa. This is... Whoa, this is... Was interesting. This is, I think, what they call a dust devil. But we, Sarah just saw it happening back there and it came right over us. Wow, that's a quite a new adventure for us out here in the field. <laughs> it's like a tiny tornado. <laughs> well, if I were working in oil paints now, this would be totally ruined but uh, this is all dry so we'll rearrange the cameras here and start again <laughs> sting <laughs> well let me clean up a few things around here before we start 
Wow. Well, that was a that was a first. Well, we both heard something just before that happened. We thought it was a tractor. Something coming down the road. And we saw all this stuff flying around. Just a minute ago, we saw some corn husks. Must have been 500 feet up there in the air. Where was I? Right now, I have a painting whose basic shapes are just too basic. It is going to need some refining from here because it just does not express all the beauty that this has to offer. But I have to have these big basic shapes on there first. It's kind of like building a house. I have to have the foundation put in properly before I put in the architectural features. So I'm not too upset this is looks quite so simple at this point. One reason I bring more brushes with me than I think I actually need is acrylics dry so fast that if, if these brushes aren't washed out really well each time they're used and put down they dry up very quickly and that's what's happened to this one. It'll come back to life a little bit but a few times of that and the brush has pretty much had it. So that's why it's always a good idea for me to bring several good brushes with me. Burnt Sienna Ultramarine Blue. Now, spray this. This is all dry. That, that's not going to bring that back to life, but this will allow me to put these other colors on top of this and they'll be able to flow over them a little bit easier. When I sketched this barn out, I set myself a little bit over there to the left. And I could actually see a little sliver of the front of this ultramarine blue, white, and a little bit of the green that was still on that palette there. And spray that. Just a little bit of that creek in there. This stream is a fortunate circumstance because it does sort of break up this big green space and I think I'd like it without this too but it does add just another little accent of interest and since it's there I think I would like to have it in the painting. See this is what happens even if I wipe the brush off and set it down sometimes I just don't get all the paint off of it and then it dries out in a matter of minutes. The way to bring that back to life is to wash out the brush in some alcohol. I can't put these sky holes in just anywhere, although it may look like I'm doing that. In some instances it is, but I'm trying to define the branches and the tree trunks. If the edges of these trees are too hard, it will diminish the nice hard severeness of this roof of the barn, so I want to keep these trees soft. Oh, it's really funny, at this point in this painting, it's just, I just get a feeling about it that, that it's just becoming a bit magical, you know? It's just, you work on it and, and it just doesn't seem to be quite right, or it seems to be so basic and so almost amateurish. Uh, and then at some point, something happens, just a few strokes here and there, and it starts to come to life. And of course, this is all a matter of taste, but I'm trying to satisfy my own taste and not someone else's. I'm trying to follow my own path on this. So even if this has been done a million times, which it has, and much better by a lot of other artists, it still holds a lot of beauty and charm for me. Ultramarine blue, but I, you know, I'm using 
very few colors on this palette, and the colors I've chosen have been, gosh, pretty arbitrary. I mean, it doesn't even matter so much what colors are used on a palette. It's what you do with the ones you've got. I'm just about finished, but there are a few details, and I hate to stop. I just hate to stop doing this, you know. I could just sign it now and, and say it was finished, but I think I'll take this back to the studio and add a few more details to it because it's just so rich in texture out here. Sarah and I have enjoyed so much being here on this Amish farm here in Indiana. And it's been very quiet, a little exciting with the uh, dust, dust devil. And we've had a great audience over here that has been very attentive and very quiet too. So I'll sign this painting after I put in those few details. I'll varnish it back in the studio, put a frame on it, and we'll see what it looks like. This vegetable and fruit stand is in a huge flea market located in Chipshawana, Indiana, part of Amish country. have a lovely smell, homemade jam smell, conquered grapes. Beautiful. Wow, look at these cabbages. It's a tremendous. Two twenty-five each. I wish we could uh, fit one in the motorhome refrigerator, but this won't fit. Massive. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had been working out with waste. It's incredible. We need the cookbook to go with it. 50 ways to serve cabbage. Oh, these look good. This is the second time we've had the opportunity to come to the flea market here in Chipshawana, and we just love this place. And the Amish lifestyle looks so wonderful. It looks like it takes a lot of work, though, and I'm wondering, are things changing at all for the past 100 years? Oh, yeah. It's, you know, it's, we moved out of the Stone Ages a um, long time ago. I mean, we have to uh, change our lifestyle accordingly, uh, you know, to keep up to be competitive in our, um, like, a, just take um, construction, for instance. Uh, you know, we cannot be competitive taking a hammer and uh, a handsaw out on the job anymore. So, therefore, you know, we have to take a, a portable generators and air compressors to uh, uh, operate our, our air tools and stuff. And, you know, it's, we, you know, we have not lost, lost our heritage. No. Uh, we still believe strongly in it. I mean, we still have the same beliefs, but we, we just changed our lifestyle. So the integrity is still very much intact, but just keeping up with the modern world requires a little bit more Absolutely. updating. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yup. Well, I'll okay. take those years of corn. Okay, <laughs> that looks thanks. great. I'll pay you for that. You Thank bet. you. Thank you. Thank you. We, we had a great time walking over uh, past the cows. Oh, black and white beauties. No. Oh. Mm. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am pretty sure that I need a package of these monster cookies. They have oats, peanut butter, brown sugar, margarine, chocolate chips, M&Ms, everything I like. Hello. Well, Sarah and I very much enjoyed the Amish country, a great place to visit paint, but here we are back in the studio, and I've only put a few additional touches on this painting, nothing major, so I'll let you take a look at it, and then I'll show you a few more paintings I've done of other farms.
For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Batsimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.